Ah, my gentle ones. This is a learning day. This is a learning opportunity for you. Because, yeah, I know, this is, this is, what, uh, this is what the government does. Uh, they keep information in such a way that you can't get the answers that you're looking for. And this is a very familiar scenario to me. Um, and I am uh, really heartened to see how many people are concerned about the seniors that are in their constituency. Uh, I'm sure that's true for some of the people over there. And I enjoy and I urge them to join the conversation. Um, and I would argue here that there is a difference because what the government uh, has done and would answer you if they answered you um, is to say that they do keep track. They keep track of the number of hours that any given patient gets attention, gets one-on-one -on -one care. Um, but they don't necessarily keep track or they won't admit to keeping track and they won't give you the information about uh, what the ratio is because they say, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it, it's how many hours of attention the person gets and that's what we need to know. And this was actually changed and improved uh, let me say four years ago, five years ago, uh, um, sorry, I can't remember your name. It's got a lake in it or a river. Um, there we go, Calgary Fish Creek. She'd remember. Um, it, because the number of hours of care that anyone was getting in long-term care went up from like one point something to 3.2, I think. And this was a big leap forward. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the, the ratio and why it matters. Um, I think the ratio matters when you're looking for basic health and safety. So if you have one LP, on, LP nope, sorry, RN on for a facility that has three floors and 60 rooms on each floor, and as happens every single year without fail at this time of year, uh, you start getting uh, norovirus or some sort of um, um, flu uh, going through there and you start getting a couple of people up checking in the middle of the night and they're not people who can particularly get themselves into a uh, position to do that, shall I say appropriately, uh, you know, where you kind of lean over, I'm sorry I'm so graphic here, but where you can lean over the bed and actually, you know, puke into the wastebasket or whatever. You don't, you don't get that very often in long-term care. Literally, people can't turn themselves over. Um, so this is where that ratio becomes important. And the next thing the government's going to say is, oh, it's your, it's, um, it's chicken little and the sky is falling and you're always talking about worst case scenarios. Well. No, not particularly. The flu happens every year. People start throwing up in the middle of the night every year, and you've got one person that is a, a, an RN on duty for an entire facility, and then on each floor of that facility, you're going to have probably an LPN that's on. Uh, and they are now going to try and start to deal with all of this. And God forbid that you have someone in that facility that needs an ambulance, because almost none of these facilities will uh, have the permission of the patient, but also the resources to be able to deal with anything more difficult than providing oxygen. And the machine that, um, help me with this, the, the shocker machine that they all have, the little stand on the wall now. Defibrillator. Defibrillator, thank you very much. Um, so if you, ha if you do have uh, someone that needs an ambulance and is going to have to leave the facility, then you have your staff tied up with getting the ambulance people in and getting them into the right room and making sure the patient gets taken out. So this is when it becomes critical. And the government is sort of playing a game of risk and time here because they say, well, you know, that doesn't happen very often. So we can risk not having uh, more, a, a higher staff ratio on. Um, because we don't think it's going to happen. The thing is that when it does happen, everybody turns to the government and goes, why didn't you protect those seniors? You had the ability, you alone had the ability to make sure these people were looked after and you didn't. So a fire, a flood, uh, snow causing a roof uh, cave in. It's not hard to think of those occasions where you would need to have skilled staff on hand. And that's not to say that the personal assistants and the nursing aides aren't wonderful people. I see them twice a week, I know they are, um, but they may not, they don't have the skills and they don't want to be put in that position either. 
So I know it's frustrating to the official opposition to um, be flogging what we wish was a dead horse, um, but um, there we go. The government is not going to give us this information because it's not going to make them look very good. Those ratios are bad. Um, let's face it, folks, if, if this was a good news story, they, they'd be fighting each other to get to their feet and tell us what the ratio was. But they're not. Uh, they are not meeting my eyes. They're looking anywhere but at my eyes right now. Yep, there we go. Um, and, and I think it... Um, oh, I'm sorry. We've got two of them over there that are being particularly difficult. So we will give credit to, just a second, it's Edmonton Goldbar and who's ever sitting next to him. Here, hang on. Um, Calgary Glenmore, there we go. Thank you for the eyeball. Um, so that's why these kinds of questions get answered. Uh, and that's why it's so frustrating to people in this House when we get the government um, kind of playing jiggery-pokery with the numbers uh, and or um, a shell game. Yeah, they would. I'm so sorry, member, for uh, Airdrie Chestermer. I, I know that you are... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, don't change your names anymore. Um, but that, that's why it's frustrating. And that's why it's so frustrating to all of us to hear the government put itself out as being transparent. Because as we try and dig out um, things that we think are not going well, we got to have proof. And as we try and dig that proof out, the government won't, won't answer the questions that we're actually a answering because it's going to make them look bad. Uh, and uh, so I'm sorry to stand up today and give you a little bit of historical perspective and the bad news <laughs> that they are never going to answer this question. But it doesn't mean that you should stop trying. Um, I have spent a lot of time in long-term care facilities over the last going on 12 years going on 12 years. Um, and I got to say that, you know, even the hours of care, it's just kind of pitiful. Um, I mean, the idea that someone go, would go into a care facility in Alberta, long-term care facility, and, and not be in diapers within six months, it doesn't happen here. That, uh, sorry, it does happen here. Um, because the staff don't have time to deal with taking someone um, to the bathroom and then waiting for them and supervising them and then getting them back uh, into their beds or into their chair. They don't have time. That could be 20 minutes or 45 minutes. I mean, we all know the biggest discussion when you're in, uh, when you're in the hospital is uh, bowel movements. Well, that's why. Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's very graphic today. I apologize for that. Um, but that's what happens, and so they don't have time to do that. People wait, they press that call bell. I've never been in the facility my mom's in without the call bells going off, at least one call bell, which, which goes off the entire time in there. So people are waiting for someone to come and help them. They're not going to get that help. And then they, what's the, there's a euphemism they use. Not there's been an accident or uh, incontinence. Incontinence and um, several episodes. That's what it is. And and then they say, well, you know, we can't do it anymore. They're gonna they're gonna have to be put in diapers. And um, and there they are. You know, perfect people who were the talk of our society, the leaders in our society, respected and important and even powerful, are wearing diapers. And they didn't want to. They want to be able to go to the bathroom, but they can't because there's not enough staff. Pretty pretty undignified, huh? So, you know, are probably not a bank manager. They're probably in private care, and they actually do have someone that will wait long enough for them to go to the bathroom. But certainly anybody that's, that's got a kind of regular, you know, a nurse or radiologist or a teacher, um, all those people are sitting in long-term care in diapers. Um, and it, it matters. It makes a difference to them that they're in diapers. Um, and it affects their ability to keep going and take themselves seriously and strive to eat their meals and all of those good kind of things because they're sitting there in diapers. So, gee, this got really depressing, didn't it? No, um, no it's true. Yeah, it's all true, but it's still depressing. Um, so, anyway, my friends, that's, that's why you're not going to get an answer, and I'm sorry to give that, that information to you. And 
and to those backbenchers that are just discovering for the first time that that's why people end up in diapers. Uh, your parents, yes indeedy, in diapers. My, my mother, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, keep up the work. We'll keep pressing to get answers to things. But in the meantime, I kind of think we got the answer uh, because they won't answer. Thanks. Thank you, Honourable Member.